All right. We're here with Yasharn, Implicable Earth. Kind of a weird one, um, but much like Nicol Bolas, if I have this like spicy 4-4 four -four that can maybe block against creature-based decks and buy me some time to do other weird shenanigans, I like the idea of that. We're not playing Captain Sissy or... Captain Sissy. <laughs> Captain Sissy or like uh, the, the... What's it called? The... Paradox Engine, like, untap it, tap, mana rock, weird stuff. Like the green-white server rack type thing where you just combo off. We could, but I just chose not to. Um, but we're still running some weird tutors like Search for Glory and... What's the other one? Uh, where are you? Primal Command, Shared Summons. Uh, really, most games are probably going to boil down to just ramping into Ulamog. And we just sort of buy time with Planeswalkers, like the Wandering Emperor... Uh, big tokens from Renin 7, recurring things with Cavalier of Thorns and Regrowth, sweeping the board, sweepers. We have some card draw with the weird two mana artifacts here. Um, and it, it does have approach in it too, but I don't expect that to happen too often. Uh, I have Scape Shift in here just to thin my deck of a ton of cards, which I think is uh, has some merit to it. I'd like to try that. I used to do that a lot more, but I was kind of just haven't done it lately. Although I haven't played a deck like this in a bit. But um, it's kind of a mishmash of things. But who knows? Maybe it's closest to mid range without like big mid rangey creatures. We don't have. Elder Gargaroth in here or anything like that. But we could, if we want it to. Um, yeah, no. Just a weird just a weird list. And let's see how it how it works. Yasharn's other ability, um, besides just drawing two lands, is like preventing basically black opponents from doing things, paying life and sacrificing permanence. Not many other colors really do that. And black doesn't necessarily do that with all other cards really at all, so this might be completely useless, but uh, you're still up while I'm streaming for once. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah, what up, dude? I uh, I tend to not stream this early. I'm streaming an hour earlier than I tend to do, so we'll see. We'll see here. Also, like, comment, and subscribe so I can... Wait, what? Oh, so I can be happy. Ugh. Yeah, we're playing some weird, spicy stuff this time here. I shouldn't call it spicy. I mean, it's all like, you know, none of these cards are crazy surprising, maybe. Oh, well, some of them might be. I had Settle the Wreckage in here for a second, but I don't like leaving it up, and it doesn't seem like it's super impactful. I don't know. Oh, yeah. On the other side of the world, then, yeah. Good day to you, mate. No, that's Australian. Shoot. I tried. Hello, governor. How goes it, eh? Tome of Legends is alright. I uh, expect Yasharn to die over and over. Well, maybe not against Tat Yovo, but... You know what I mean. I think this is good. No ramp spell, though. Oh, no. The dreaded... <laughs> the dreaded turn one man land. Alright. That's fine. Alush Charge Shepherd? Oh, just so your stuff can't get countered? I guess I could run cards like that. I don't know. I'm not big on them. I don't like Mana Dorks in Tat Yovo. I think Ramp Spells are just better. Um, If I can hold on to the Fabled Passage for Oracle, that seems alright. Mold Drifter in the Command Zone. Yeah, basically. Fierceful, forceful Cultivator. Costs two less if you have no lands, right? And then you get a basic from, yeah, gotcha. This is like a weird ramp spell. We do have Farewell here. Well, not right now, but... Uh, Alright. Okay. Hopefully we have time to, like, do stuff. They drew a land? Oh, come on. They didn't have a land in hand because this was this cost two, and they immediately top deck the land. Come on, dude, that's toxic. That's toxic. All right, so that doesn't do much here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna play Oracle. See if there's a land on top. If there's not, we just Fabled Passage. Oh no, I kind of want to draw that, so I'll just play this. 
All right, so I can farewell everything. They drew another land, and it's in Evolving Wilds? <laughs> Come on. Come on. That's insane. Oh, my God. Of course. And no lands for this thing, dude. No lands in hand for this. Okay, that's fine. That's that's actually good, because now we get to destroy everything and exile the graveyard. So if they recur with, like, whatever, I could just undo that. So let's get a planes? Sure. Alright. Name everything except in artifacts. Alright. I do play enough lands for Oracle, I think. The last game the last time we played Augur, we hit land like every time. Which is really nice. Comma? Well, that's really good to come off of an exile effect. So I don't know what to do now. I guess we race. Oh, we can't race comma. That just doesn't work. Well, silly me. Alright, so we're really just looking to... A giant token is all right. Can I cycle this? No, it's not Wilt. Oh yeah, they can't sacrifice comma tokens. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it isn't indestructible. Huh. Wow. All right. I don't think it's going to matter too much, but yeah, I guess that is something to take note of. Dead next turn regardless. Of course, I don't have a board wipe. I can make a big token. Can just do something here. Guess I could do both? Kind of? They have Toski in hand. Of course they do. Alright, so I can make a giant token. Yeah, we can't sacrifice Slayer's Bounty because you're Sharn. Uh, and then pass, and then maybe I can uh, approach, and then plus this to mill a bunch, and then get closer to approach somehow. Or I'm just dead. Oh, whatever. Well, my opponent always had a land for Tatyova every single turn. So, and they had to, like, basically top deck them because we knew they had none in hand. So, I guess uh, there's no beating that anyways. That sucks. I don't think I'm going to drop any of the stuff in my deck that requires to be sacrificed. Not yet. I don't really expect Yasharn to, like, stick around after I play him. Kind of, It's actually kind of fine if he dies, so I can continue to get lands. That was almost an approach win, though. Oh, there goes the neck. Oh, yes. Yes! Okay, um, well, Yashar just hard counters Yogmoth. <laughs> so, uh, that's pretty cool. I did not expect uh, to play against someone who had a very bad matchup. Well, barring they have no answer to Yashar. But, okay. Oh! <laughs> They read your shard and like, wait a minute. Oh. And is it safe to bet they don't have any removal? Because uh, Yogmoth is the removal. So if I just don't let them use Yogmoth, I just win. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, God, man. That's great. That's great. All right. Your shard's second ability has been quite relevant so far. It has won me an entire game. I got a turn zero win from your shard's ability. Sweet. All right, we have double, double field of the dead in hand, <clears throat> and escape shift. So, if we can get there, we can just have a giant wall of two twos, to not die to goblins. Yeah, that dude's like nah. On the play with the the red mana rock here, um, yeah, fine. Very well. Um, 
guess I need a second white, but I also need a second green. I do have one in this land. Yeah, we'll do white. I could have also maybe dug for a sweeper? Just mulligan for a sleeper, rather. Wow, they hit four goblins off of this? Doesn't this only see four cards? They hit four goblins? That's insane. Okay. Um. Hmm. I guess I'm just playing Yasharn. Excuse me. There's only two or three goblins that give all goblins haste. So, as long as they don't have any of those... What does this do? As long as they don't have any of those, they can't... Um... Oh, well, alright. They can give Muxus haste now. And they also get around a single blocker every time. Um, I guess I do this, make a 2-2, two, two. and then play this tapped, and then still die to Muxus. Oh, they completely whiffed. Unbelievable. Five lands and a mana rock. That is insane. Wow. All right. Well, now we can maybe stonewall them with some 2-2s two for, like, the rest of forever, but we'll see. Escape Shift will make an army of 2-2s. Two <laughs> That's why I think Krenko is just better in every single way than Muxus. Because you don't really have to rely on Muxus' ability. You can just play Krenko and tap it. Opponents somehow making, I don't know what they're like pausing to think about. I don't really know what they're assessing. They don't really do anything except play goblins. Power two or less can't be blocked. Wow, Willem's already half a year old, dude. That's crazy. Man. Has he said da da yet? What is my opponent doing? I have no idea. Okie dokie. Okay, so can I safely escape shift or do I have to like leave up? I might have to leave the... Actually, Scapeshift makes all of the the creatures, like, massive. Can I... Didn't I do both? I can just do both. So I guess I'll do that. Alright, so we'll just do this. One, two, three, four. Well, opponent, you weren't dead. You were not dead. It was basically impossible for them to hit us, kind of, because we had so many 2-2s. Two I wasn't going to sacrifice the untapped land, so we're just going to get four lands, so I can leave up protection... I make eight two twos, or I make four two twos and give them all four four counters. Probably just make eight two twos though. Yeah, I still don't think I'm gonna run Crater Hoof in this deck because we're not reliably going to have both of these in play. Even just one might not make enough tokens to feel good about it. I think at that point I just want to play Ul Ulamog, but we you see Willem. Wab. Wabby boy, yeah. Wab. Dude, I'm naming my son Obadiah. I like that name. Obadiah. 
or maybe Odysseus get some of that some of that ancient culture in this house. Maybe Yasharn. Ramp spells and yep, I mean that's everything we want to be doing. Hopefully it's not a counter spell deck. Ooh, this could just win out of nowhere. Uh, maybe if they don't have counter magic. I'll, I'll, yeah, all right, I'll try it. I'll try it. Okie dokie. It doesn't look like a counter spell version, which is good. Yeah, Obadiah. The only Obadiah I've ever known was from Iron Man 1, the, the, the villain. Okay, it could just be Mono White. That is possible. You can do that. Gonna do this to get a green and a white. Yeah. It could have counter spells as well. And they could have countered that maybe, but they did not. Looks like it's not a counter spell. No flash creature either. I don't know what that means. No idea what they could possibly. Uh, sword, swords of Plowshares maybe? Yeah, maybe. Charming Prince. Okay, so of course. Why wouldn't they have that card? It's like the only card in that like goes infinite with Yasharn. They, uh, Yasharn. Yorion, they go like back and forth and they flicker their whole battlefield over and over and we can't really stop it all right i'm just gonna keep ramping i guess uh, i can ramp like this first get a green and a white and then do it again Get a green and a white. <clears throat> it has blue in it. Opponent chose to not tap low. Interesting. All right, you counter this. Nope. Do you counter this? <laughs> nope. You counter this? Nope. All right. Opponent uh, really thinking about it there. Oh, look. It's the card I said they had. What a surprise. Exile's my card that has something to do with the graveyard. I think I can kill... Yurion before it, uh, oh, okay, sure, let's see here, I guess I'll cast this first, I don't have any reason to scape shift really, well not yet, other than to thin my deck some, but I don't think that's worth it quite yet, uh, this will be flickered and blow up something, I'd rather it not blow up the tome, I think we can probably just scape shift now. I think that's fine. Scape shift all of my lands. Maybe keep the man lands? Probably should keep the man lands. Alright. Um, Blast Zone seems decent. Enclave, if we ever stick our stuff. Gotta make sure I keep colors in play so I don't color screw myself. I can get Fabled Passage too. No attack. I can crack Passage on my own upkeep here. 
just thin my deck of another land. I want them to cast their commander. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight mana. We're going to lose the Mind Stone, so kind of a ways away from Ulamog. They portable hold the token? Can you do that? You can, okay. Still no, still no, uh, Yorion. Swords of the Plowshares is decent. Okay, um, still could maybe have a counter spell. I don't know. I mm, guess not. All right, we're gonna exile the Cavalier, or well, try. Okay, that worked. That's pretty good. We can play Maze Mind's Tome now. Leave up Swords to Plowshares, I guess. I guess they just don't have Ephemerate in their hand. I'm sure they would have snapped it off right there. I don't see a reason to intervention any of the cards in there uh, in play. I also didn't expect to untap the Mind Stone. Teferi, great. Alright, guess we're playing against Teferi now. I'm gonna do this now. Take less damage, get rid of this card so it can't do anything stupid with their commander. Let's scry for a land here. That's not a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, I need a land on the top. I can exile two lands here from the opponent because they haven't like played a land in a while. Maybe that's worth it. Better than uh, better than anything else I could do. Maybe. So do we exile two lands? Do we have to exile to fairy? Maybe we don't have to exile to fairy. Maybe we just don't. Can hit two mana sources? I can hit two blue sources. It's kind of suspect to not take Teferi, though. Yeah, Arcane Signet Island. But I think I'm going to do um, Island Teferi. I'll, th I'll set them back lands, and I'm just not going to let them have Teferi. I think that's just a little too much. I'm not even capitalizing on them missing mana, so I don't see a reason to stop it. Angel of Sanctions. That uh, exiles until it goes away, right? Yeah, okay. I could have technically prevented that from being cast, but then Teferi could just tuck Ulamog and I'm back to square one, basically. Counter here. Doomscar is on the top, and I can draw it immediately. Draw a card. That is not a land. Um, yeah, we're going to lose this auger. Don't have a choice, really. Yeah. And then I can, if they don't scoop right now, I can blow everything up. I can blow up two things. I will do that now. You and you. So they just have no, no blue mana because one of them filters. So now they just have no blue mana at all. And they're done. Nice. All right. Sweet. We actually beat Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. They didn't seem to have any counter spells. They had a good swords, though. Yeah, well, we just beat him with Ulamog. Well, like I said, that's kind of what the, the name of the, the game is, and we did it. Wow. They had a really good uh, start, too. They had a really good start. They never cast their Yorion. I don't know why. I don't think... I'm sure there was a turn somewhere they could have just cast that, and it would have been better than everything else they were doing. Like, Cavalier blew up something, I guess, but it made it so they couldn't attack. Yurion has flying. They can Charming Prince it and amass, <clears throat> amass a bunch of cards and probably get out from being mana screwed, because they could just be drawing cards. They just didn't do that. Alright, so Zakama's a little scary. 
Um, I always feel good against playing, or well, just good against it when I have sweepers, but it come to find out that it usually doesn't do it. Uh, I don't want to keep this hand and lose the mana rocks, but I guess I'm on the play, so... Alright, well, there's one sweeper. Alright, Augur, you need to do some crazy stuff. You need to cheat right now. Oh, that's a turn too late. We know what they just drew. They would have played this untapped. That's kind of funny. Okay, found a land. This is alright against Sakama. Especially if Sakama is their only way to naturalize things, which is not unlikely and tends to be what they do. Um, can I draw? Not really. I can shuffle the top to look for a land that way. I think that's worth it. Also, just get more lands in my hand. No land. Okay, so white source. And it's basically a free attack. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Okie dokie. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So they have Zakama mana, and there's really nothing I can do about it. So... Um... I think I'm gonna just play Toma Legends and draw off of it. And then play... Maze Mind's Tome? And then I won't scry that to the bottom. Okay. I mean, can I beat Sakama with two activations? I don't know. Oh, they don't cast Sakama. Sure. I feel like they should have swung with their lore hold before they did anything else, just to see what it hits first. Probably doesn't matter. Although that is a good thing to see. I guess I can Conquer's Death that card. Yeah, I guess I'll just Conquer's Death, Mirari's Wake. We are dying in the air, but... I guess it's not the end of the world. So if I played the Arcane Signet... Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if I played Arcane Signet, I could have cast Overwhelming Splendor. But I kind of expected them to just play Zakama, and then i lose the Arcane Signet, so... They scry three cards to the top. Okay. Alright. Um, yeah, I guess we just have to sweep the board now. So I don't die to the to the board. <laughs> so I don't uh, die to the board there. Well, I don't know. I can play this and block with it. Man, this is just bad. I don't think I can take six. And I probably should deal with Mirari's Wake anyways, because if I don't, I'm kind of dead to a ton of activations by Zakama. Let's do that. Uh, we'll scry the land to the bottom. Okie dokie. Well, I expect Zakama this turn. Especially how we've just baited out a ton of artifacts, and it would be kind of weird if they didn't do that. Five... Don't you just have nine lands? It doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have nine lands. It doesn't matter how you tap. Elspeth's Conqueror's Death is the last thing I would blow up here.
Okay, you could have just used Zakama's ability. Again, this is someone not swinging with their lore hold first for some reason. Before they, yeah, like now they can't abrade the, the uh, whatever. How do you not abrade Maze Mind's Tome here? I always abrade Maze Mind's Tome. You just want to stop me from like finding something? Yeah. So Splendor doesn't end the game outright. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we just play Splendor and hope it's good enough? Because if it isn't, we're kind of in a pickle. No real attack. So let's just hope it's their only uh, only naturalized effect is Zakama. Somewhat likely, because if Zakama, you're expecting to cast it every game, then it's fine being your only naturalized card. Oh, well, no, that's not even true. They played Rip Apart. So that we just know that's not true at all. Right. But Rip Apart's also like a lightning bolt on a creature, so... Hey, Matt, how's it going? Hopefully just beating Zakama with an under... Overwhelming Splendor. <laughs> Underwhelming Splendor. <laughs> if it blows up, I guess. I mean, if it blows up, we lose. But uh, I guess they don't have an answer to it, because we would have probably seen them literally do something immediately. Alright, I'll kill this. No reason to kill Zakama, I don't think. They can sweep the board, but that doesn't... Oh. Okay, they found a... They found what they were looking for there. That's not good. Alright, so we can Cavalier to find Overwhelming Splendor again. Slowly but surely, I guess. Uh, let's see. Search for glory. Uh, I think it's safe to just play a snow land and gain an extra life. Doesn't really change anything. I can get Ulamog for five, six. Yeah, I can get Ulamog now, and I think I just will. Just a way to like upset my opponent's uh, ability to recast the comma seems like a good idea. Whew, it's a nice day. Yeah, it looked like it was real nice out earlier. Wow, they actually are just letting me get overwhelming splendor immediately. Very surprising. Very surprising. I will take said option. I did not expect that. If they have like to no, they can't have Teferi's protection. They could have heroic whatever, heroic stupid dumbness. <laughs> uh, I suppose I'm not immediately dead to it. So, oh, don't have heroic intervention, dude. I swear. I'm pretty sure this would stop that. I think it would stop it. I'm gonna play this as a as a land here. All right, so do you have another answer to this? Nope. That is not it. Cool. So I'm guess I'm I'm suppose I'm just going to take out two lands here. Oh, now nah, we can wait on that. We can wait till we draw some lands with Yasharn. I forgot to bring this card up. We do have this card in this deck just because Replacing all the nonsense in your hand seems like a good idea. I could play it safe, take out their creatures. That's probably just a better idea. I'm not denying them the ability to cast anything in their entire deck. And the uh, Faceless Haven is a 1-1. One, one. So. Oh, yeah, alright. My opponent has swiftly dealt with all of our threats. <laughs> okay, alright. That is a 1-1 one, one opponent. Your man land is a 1-1. One, one. Nice. Approach the second, son. Don't mind if I do. Um, I think I'm going to play it spicy, though. And I don't know why I just played a land. My bad. I was not supposed to play that land because of the Cultivator. Whoops. That was really stupid. That's just one less card to dig for this. 
Uh, I can't play Yashar now if I don't want to shuffle, but I can just play it dangerously and shuffle anyways. Alright, now that I drew a land, and I have Orozka drawing cards, I think it's fine to just use this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep up the Orozka. See what happens here. Ah, oh, rip. Alright. Alright, I have a 12-12. I did not need a Wrath of God this game. Well, not yet. Sure. I it's been a while since I've seen that. And uh that's that's terrifying. That is quite spoopy. Alright. We have uh removal, infinite removal in Castle Ardenvale as long as Splendor sits in play. Come on, approach. Come on, come on. I have Teferi's Protection now as well. How many cards down? Two? Uh, I don't think there's any card I can draw that like gets me there instantly. So let's just pass. But Teferi's Protection guarantees it now because I just draw a card and then win. Battle Mammoth. Okay, this is a 1-1. One, one. Man, Splendor just really sealed it in there. That is messed up. But we did take, it did take us two times. We had to like, we had to do it a second time because they did have an answer to it. Nice! <laughs> oh yes, gotta love those approach wins, dude. I love it. Oh man, there's no better feeling, let's be real. There's no better feeling in the entire game than approach the second sun. Oh yeah, look at it. Frisbeeing out the emotes. Every direction. Opal win free. You get an emote and you get an emote. Alright, we're we're we have a positive win rate. Always surprises me. We have a positive win rate. With some weird semi mid range nonsense. Alright, approach. Approaches on the board. Gotta love it. What is this? Black, red, weird stuff. Being your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards, where X is the total life lost from your opponent. Exile one of those cards, or the bottom of players. All right, so you like sort of draw an extra card every turn if you are assaulting your opponent. Um, probably important. I have a board wipe in this game. Idyllic Tutor does not get me there. This would be a Solemnity Nine Lives matchup, because they are black and red. Yasharn might be good enough, just as a 4-4, but they're, again, black and red. Probably not a lot of removal. We're on the draw, too. I think we're going to bank on... Ugh. Ugh. Alright, well, now we're all in on a sweeper. Okay. Let's get rid of Cavalier. Really expensive. Hopefully we can hide this before our opponent gets rid of it with Fortel. First, the first hand was certainly uh, certainly keepable there, to be honest. All right, we're never going to cast this for a sweeper, so we're just going to flip it. That first hand was fine, maybe, but I really just wanted to board wipe. All right, opponent's already paused. Feeling good. Oh, nope, they're back. Mount hand. I don't think I like these lands, to be honest. I like the style, kind of, but just the fact that there's, like, a dude in it, I don't know. I want my, uh, I like my lands to be barren of, of life there. I think that's just more interesting. Phyrexian Arena is really not what I wanted to see at all. Kind of just, it just kind of makes the, uh, makes what I did kind of pointless there, trying to get a sweeper. Um, I can try to find something that blows it up, but I don't have anything soon that blows it up. I guess I'll just get Ujin, though. Might as well, because eventually I can blow it up. 
I do like the Kamigawa lands, yeah. I do like those. I think the space lands are still, like, my favorite, just because I like space from Theros. The cosmic lands, if you will. Post-combat. So if they exile something, they have no access to it. They just can't use it. Oh, unless, I guess it's a land. Silly me. Okay, play this, and then I can play the Wandering Emperor. I guess I will. Oh, this Phyrexian Arena, dude. Ay, ay, ay. What does Patient Zero even do? Damage isn't removed from your opponent during cleanup steps. Oh, okay. Sure. That's a really, really weird one. They find it worth it to kill that. I guess that's good news. Wasn't really using it for anything. Okay, can't play Toma Legends first, and I'm not going to play a Johnny that then does nothing, so I'll just play this. Goop. Hmm. Well, I mean, I can just kill it. Right? They swing and I block, and then the ability is gone, and this heals again. And again, I don't really care if Yasharn dies, specifically. This just makes me think they have weird burn, like a ton of burn in their deck, so they can stack the burn. It just doesn't... I, I, I don't think this ever... You have to, like, let this live while also doing damage, and then, like, the thing stays alive, and the, the creature you attacking like I, I don't I don't know I don't get it okie dokie uh, I think I'm willing to trade here I think I'm willing to just trade I think that's fine just get it out of the way I can recast Yashar next turn if I want to but I think I have to blow up Phyrexian Arena if I'm to win this game which is incredibly annoying but I don't really have a choice rather not have to cash my Ujin in just to deal with a stupid thing like that, but I don't have a choice. Maybe I do have a choice. They already have a ton of cards in hand, but I have to, like, come back from this game or I'm dead. And the only way to, like, stabilize is if my opponent stops drawing 800 cards. Because I can deal with the board... I can also make two 4-4 four fours, uh, no, zombies. Angels next turn. That's not terrible. Not terrible. What did they exile with the... A den in a lethal form engine. Soren, That's a pretty good one. Oh, this is non-creatures. I thought it was just instants and sorceries. Probably doesn't matter too much. My opponent found another card draw engine, though. Basically a... A uh, Phyrexian Arena again. Primal Command. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm killing this Hellkite before it just kills me next turn because my opponent's going to cast 600 cards. Play this. I don't have anything to minus with it, so I'll just take it up. Yeah, just red, black, good stuff. So we can Primal Command Ulamog. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, almost there.
They stole my shared summons. Okay. Well, don't have any uh, green mana to cast into the north. That is uh, really unfortunate. Probably should have assessed how I tapped a little bit better. Oh no, I need double green for primal primal command anyways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I really wish I could have cast that. That is unfortunate. Ulamog might not actually be good enough anyways, but... Does this exile a creature? It does. So they can just wait till I cast... Oh, no, oh okay. yeah. Wait till I cast the Mog so they can exile it, but now they can't do that. They also did this in the wrong order. They plus their Soren before they... They plus Tybalt before they... Or just cast Tybalt before they do the other thing. Kind of weird. Well, I guess the Johnny's distracting them. I guess. I'll play this... No reason to make a board of creatures when my opponent has literal sweeper in the uh, exile there. So I'll just make some two twos. And pass. Okay, can you beat Ulamog? Probably. You do have cards <laughs> and I don't I guess there's no discard spell. They have the one enchantment removal in black red. Does overwhelming splendor stop planeswalkers? I don't think it does actually. I think it's everything but planeswalkers. It's like mana. Unless they're loyalty abilities, like, specifically, so they can still use Planeswalkers. I guess if a Johnny lives, that's pretty cool. Be kind of surprised to see that, though, but, I mean, it could happen. They can meat hook Ulamog now. They have enough mana for that. But I just, I think they have, like, 20 answers to Ulamog anyways. So it doesn't really matter. Alright, now they cannot meat hook it. They actually killed their own token before they swung with it. That's uh, interesting. I knew, understand the idea. But all right, we're going to exile these two. Put a counter here. I think I'm going to hold on to the land so I can make angels at some point. It's probably better than making a random 2-2. Two -two, I think. Yeah, probably. Though maybe not, because we're never really going to make 2-2s two and have it matter, because they have so many answers to them. So I'll just play it as a land. Mana might just be more important. Yep, there's one of the 40 answers to Ulamog. So Earthquake is each player? No, it is not. Okay, that does not have haste. Surprised they didn't just cast shared summons and then just find something crazy. I feel like that would have been better than playing a 3-3 that isn't really doing anything. But I will take it. Okay, so no matter what I'm doing, I am casting this. Let's exile, I guess, their commander. And then play Yasharn as a 5-5. Five five. It lets me draw a card off of uh, Toma Legends at some point, if it sticks around. Instead of just playing this. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so them exiling the Felidar Retreat, I guess, wound up being somewhat significant, which I did not expect. 
Oh, I get to draw now. Oh, I could have waited. I could have waited. But I didn't. Okay, so we can't protect a Johnny from the 4 3, unfortunately. But, uh. Still have a Johnny in play, I guess. I can get back Ujin with the Conqueror's Death. What a weird game. They get the two best creatures out of their deck. I'm sure they cost seven or less. Probably cost way less than that. They might not have a lot of giant things. But I'm sure there's like a, I don't know, a ravenous chupacabra maybe? I don't know. Some weird random demon. Apparently they have options. Oh boy. Oh, I gotta love to see that. That thing in Olivia. This steel stuff attacks, return a creature from your graveyard to your blah blah blah. They did not cast it. I guess they don't have a creature worth getting back. I don't know. They get to exile something. Oh, yeah, this is Graveyard Hate to undo my Conqueror's Death. Oh, they've had an answer to basically everything I'm, I've done in this game. But I guess that's what happens when you play 700 cards and your opponent doesn't. We did get the Ajani Ultimate, but I don't think it's going to do anything. What does this do when it dies? I discard and lose two, or they put back a non-dragon from a graveyard. Okay. Well, I don't really have a choice but to ultimate here. The lifelink off of the tokens is probably the only thing that's somewhat relevant. Does Boseju do anything? Not really. Does firing up the Manland do anything? Not really. Let's play that. Let's play this. Let's play this. And then leave up Boseju to blow up something that maybe doesn't immediately kill us. Don't really know what that could be. But Olivia might just end the game real quick. They can sweep the board with a, a sweeper, and that's not a terrible idea. And then they can, like, do crazy stuff afterwards. I don't know. Let's find out. Opponent kind of has the ability to do anything. I think Rest in Peace is in our deck. Not terribly relevant right now. They can do... No, that's not enough. It's got Menace. Mm. Well, if I untap, I get to maybe poke them some with these 1-1s. One -ones. Maybe. I don't know. They'll probably just fly for 5. That's what I would do. No, they do swing with the Trespasser. Want to deny my ability to reanimate something with this Conqueror's Death, I guess. Johnny isn't exactly doing anything, so I would take the other target in my uh, graveyard. I would not ever take a Johnny here, just take the Wandering Emperor. Here you go, you figured it out. And then I'll just block with everything on this, I think. I think that's fine. You can kill three of my one ones, but that, that's fine. I don't really care. Uh, sure. They put damage here so they can uh, Magma Quake. Yep. So now they can Magma Quake for four and keep Junji. Exile all creatures in Planeswalkers with three or less. Okay. That's not what I expected. It does exile my ability to curse them. That's the second opponent who's actually exiled this card. So we've lost access to the curse. I don't think the curse would have mattered. We probably don't have the time for it. We're literally dead in the air next turn. We have, we're at 8. They can swing for literally 8. Okay. Oh no, the creature they reanimate actually comes tap and attacking as well. So we're like Omega dead. Magda is in their deck? Oh, no, they do have dragons. They have dragons. That makes sense. Magda. That's weird. All right, that does not do it. 
Johnny is also not really doing it here. This gives us a bunch of mana, to which then we can't really use it for anything. I believe we're dead. We can get rid of this so we don't take one damage randomly. They can, like, spam this. But again, we're literally dead in the air, and there's no card in my deck that gets me out of this. This doesn't have lifelink. I can't draw. Well, Seiju isn't blowing anything at relevant. This doesn't have anything to minus. I can make a 3-3 and posture on the ground. But then we're just dead to the air. Well, we started to slowly come back. Like, we got to a point where they were almost out of cards. If we had another board wipe, maybe we could have done something. But them stealing shared summons meant they got the best two cards in their entire deck to their hand. And from there, it's probably just too much to uh, overcome. Now, if I had, like, rest in peace or something, it would have been fine to stop a little bit of what they were doing. But Valky just... Or, well, uh, Tybalt was just too much. Too much. We can't keep that. I think I can keep this. So I have a Swords, I have a Sweeper, Giant Tokens, hopefully Yasharn, scrying into a land with a treasure map. Opponent has a zero mana card. It can literally only be a single thing in the game, uh, which is, uh, whatchamacallit? Oh, they have Mox Amber. Is that what that is? Is that Mox Amber? Why are they pausing on their turn when they have no mana? It has to be Mox Amber, because it's not being paused on my turn. I don't see a reason to get rid of that. Uh, let's play a land and pass. I can leave up the channel here. I don't know if I'm going to. But I kind of prefer if they just cast their commander and then I put a stop here. So I can prevent them from activating it. I can also just let this happen. It can't give itself haste and the other target is tapped. All right. Yeah, this this is fine. Yeah, Ornithopter Crypt. No, Ornithopter doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work with their commander in any way. Oh, I guess it does. Right, it does. For some reason, I thought it didn't, but it does. Okay, so I'm all in on having my sweeper work, which might be a little loose, but I like to play loose, I guess. So we'll play a land... And leave up the treasure map. I'll hide the fact that I have swords maybe with that. Swords, if we're in a huge pickle and they do something crazy, would, would be nice. But I think Wrath of God is going to have to be good enough. And I feel like it's important to be a little bit greedy with my stiff seas. Alright, that is a 6-6. Six, six, and we're fine with it. Uh, no... How come it didn't tap the white... It tapped the white source and not the green source. That's a little weird to me. <laughs> it's a little suspect. Okay. I don't think I like it. No land here, huh? No land. Very nice. Alright, so we get to do this. <clears throat> get to scry with the treasure map. Play this tapped. Let's not get too crazy. I'm sure they have other things to do. Yeah, it's not... Oh, well, look, it's one of the haste threats that always comes out of nowhere and annoys me. I'm not going to Swords it, though. I'm just going to cast Yasharn and maybe block it. I can actually just kill it with my channel land as well, but I think I want to just play this as a land. That's not true. We're going to cast Yasharn and get two lands. Yeah, so we can just channel and kill this. It's fan. They can't cast their commander first, so let's play you and pass. Could have drew uh, with my treasure, but I have a game plan already. Okay. Getting a combat, another creature, power four, put a counter on this. Creature to control, gain haste. Create a five five. 
Okay. So I'm sure they're going to swing. I'll let them go to combat and give it a counter on this. I don't think that's terribly relevant. How do you not swing here? I don't... I don't understand. Oh, right, I can't sacrifice my treasure tokens because I played Yashar. Okay, so do I have the swords here? I think I have the swords. And I will swords... This? Spamming five fives is a bit of an issue, and I have the ground kind of gummed up, so I think that's fine. Alright, well that makes a lot of things easy, and I wish I hadn't gotten rid of my own thing there, but such is the way of things. Let's make a giant tree, and I guess I'll just do this. I can't use my treasure tokens for anything, because again, I cannot sacrifice them. Hey, we have another sweeper, and we can actually cast it. Okay, so the opponent has a huge uphill battle to, to fight here. Okay, while that is good, it is not good enough. I think I'm just going to farewell this board. If Honestly, if I was going to farewell, I probably shouldn't have minused. Yeah. Alright, I'll swing for 9 and see how they block. Probably just don't block. I don't think I would. Wow. All good. They did block. Um, yeah, alright. Let's just farewell creatures. Creatures and graveyards, I guess. Creatures and graveyards. No enchantments, no artifacts. That's fine. Uh, yep, to the command zone. We will... I think I'm just gonna plus here. I didn't hit any lands? Ay ay ay. that's rigged. Rigged this, and then crack here to draw. I'm going to get these out of the way before I cast your Sharn again. And leave up the Wandering Emperor. They play a land, maybe cast their commander. <laughs> the other green haste threat. <laughs> I sort of got a kit. I can't get away from these cards, dude. Oh my god, please. That's funny. Oh, I can't exile. No, opponent. <laughs> no, I couldn't do it. I couldn't actually... I couldn't do it. It, it comes in with two less loyalty. <laughs> I should have played this pre-resolution uh, pre so I could actually activate it. Oh, man, my opponent didn't realize. <laughs> now that did I, but... Oh, one punch to the other, dude. That's funny. Now, if I didn't do this, um, if I cast it pre-combat, then they wouldn't swing. But that's kind of fine, because then they can really never swing. Oh, well, no, this is only Flash the first time. So they can do it the next turn cycle. And I don't really have an answer to this. Yeah, wow, that wasn't over. We're losing Renin 6. No, we can make a three. Uh, we can make a giant creature. Yeah, we can cash it in and make a giant thingamaboop. Yeah, and I think I kind of have to, because... That's that's wicked funny though. All right. Ha 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 ha. Uh yes, yes. Got him. No one. Yep. See, that's 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 what I say about Vorniclix. Nobody. Uh, you just play the card because it's a six six haste. Because the ability on it really isn't all that great. I guess it is with that commander because it like doubles the counters. But you've played a six six haste. Like you don't really. You're kind of past the point of caring about giving some things a little bit more power when they attack. Vorniclix is just a smooth brain 6-6 six, six with haste and trample. Of course they had it with Questing Beast too, so there was only one other haste threat that they could have in the green package. It's that Tereska Kukukrugugu. Alright, so we've gone full circle back to Tat Yova. I don't like this hand at all. Uh, alright, if we can just ramp mindlessly into our commander, and then cast Ulamog at some point. <laughs> Got the sniffles. Nope, oh, Pona's ramping better than we are. I think I'm going to drop Settle the Wreckage for maybe another ramp spell. What the heck is this thing? Oh, 
Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's just guarantee ramp. Here to play a land's turn. Augur can't hit anything. Let's go forest. Oh, my neck is killing me, dude. I think I, I, think I just sleep wrong. Oh, they found a way to play a land the same turn they cast Tat Yellow because I guess that's just what this deck always does. Okay, land, and then ramp again for a another, yeah, another forest. Don't know why they played a land out of hand like that. They could have tapped the Herbalist to put the land in play and then saw another opportunity to see a land off the top with the Augur instead of playing the land for the turn. Having never seen this card, and I've already uh, claimed my opponent has played it wrong, which apparently they have because they don't seem to have another land in hand or anything. Okay, well, that'll be good later. Um, guess I'll play this in the meantime. Look for a land on the top. Nope. Play Yasharn, then? Just find more lands. Okay, my opponent just cast Veil of Summer. I think it's safe to just hold on to that card forever to just make me wonder about it than it is to just cast it. I think you should just hold on to it. Makes way more sense. Alright, looks like they drew two lands in a row. Oh, and it's a really good one. Wowzy. Alright, our opponent has seen 200 more cards than us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, we're getting close. I could sweep the board, but they haven't done anything I'm scared of yet. Kind of curious what's going on in the hand, though. They just haven't really done anything, like, super crazy. Well, that is kind of crazy, but it doesn't just kill me. Alright, final land. That's good. Uh, I don't know what I can even look for for Search for Glory. But let's just start to look for something. I have one, two, three, four, five mana, so I could immediately play this, draw some cards. I could immediately play this. Elspeth's Conqueror's Death isn't a terrible idea either. Yeah, I like Conqueror's Death. That's fine. If I can, um, if I can just get the thing to reanimate Ulamog on the backswing, I think that's a good idea. I think we'll try that there. Fine attack here. But there's something telling me we're probably just dead anyways, because I drew 80 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so we won't actually get there with Ulamog before we lose Conqueror's Death, unfortunately. Opponent is manually tapping, but they manually tapped their only two-colored Menasaurus. I don't know what that means. It's kind of weird. I might have just blow everything up if I have the ability with the Undo Inversion. Though I guess I am top decking a Cleansing Nova might just be a better idea. I get to reanimate Augur at the least, the very least. I might replace Return to Nature, too. Because when it's not good, I'd like to at least cycle it like you can with Wilt. You don't have to do this at Sorcery, right? Nope. Alright, well, I guess we're back to the Undo Inversion.
Oh, maybe not. I can blow up that land. Nah, that seems reckless, though. Wait a minute. Undo Inversion doesn't work because all their permanents are lands. I made that mistake before. I can't kill their stuff with Undo when this is in play because they're all forests. So, good thing I caught that. I did not catch it last time. It does mean I have no answer to Nyssa, so hopefully they don't just win the game the turn, like, their next turn with all that mana, and I can, like, I don't know, do something about it. Okay, they got two green sources. That means more creatures this turn and not leaving up something weird. Otherwise, I feel like they would have gotten blue. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven green mana. <laughs> Opponents really struggle busting this. I'm going to pour myself a drink. Ugh. Okay, my opponent figured out that nothing was worth doing. Uh, I can get into damage now. I'm dead if they have heroic intervention anyways. So I'm just going to do this and see if I can put two damage onto it. I am literally dead if they have heroic intervention. I'm not even going to try to play around it. I don't think I can. Uh, let's see here. I cannot do anything about it. So. <laughs> Alright, we can play... A land? Do we play this as a creature? Does that matter? We're at 10 next turn anyways. And 11 doesn't change anything. I guess it can technically block something scary, and I don't really need it. So maybe it'll just block something. Who knows? Who knows? I don't want to regrowth and have my opponent know what I can regrowth. I'd rather just hold on to it. Especially if Ulamog gets countered. Okay, my opponent... Thought really hard on their own turn, and then paused it on our turn, and then just didn't use the mana for anything. I don't know what that means. Yep, I have no answer to that. I guess I haven't opened this bottle in like... Ah, oh, it's actually really stuck. Ay, ay, ay. I think Danny was the last person to touch this thing, too. Oh, there it goes. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. Okay. Everything costs two more if it's a non creature. Probably won't deter them from really doing anything, so. Okay, they pick up their thing again. That's really annoying. I have to, like, sweep the board with uh, Cleansing Nova now. Because, again, their creatures are lands. Again. <laughs> so I can't can't do anything about that. I can, however, just cast Ulamog. And maybe attack some things. Alright, now it feels really good. Actually, I might still just... Uh, I might just cast Cleansing Nova again. Hmm. Undo Inversion does not do anything, and I can't really... Well, I can Ulamog, but what is it... I hit this in, like, <clears throat> Nyssa? It is indestructible, so maybe that's good? Let's see, we'll play land. Cast Ulamog. Take out this and that. And then just pass. 
still a lot of things going on, but as long as I can just stave off my mass sweepers, I think I'm in a decent spot. Alright, they found a way to play lands out of the graveyard. That's kind of fine. They actually did not take the Terramorphic Expanse there, that's surprising. Oh, I cut my finger. I cut my finger really bad just now. Wow. I, like, open that as bad as you could. Jeez. <laughs> well, they had infinite mana before and weren't doing anything crazy with it, so... Safe to assume they can't really do that this time. Just drawing a bunch of cards. It means two Ulamog attacks are good enough. But next turn it looks like they have drawn so many cards that they might have found something crazy. Alright, that makes a giant token. It is not a land, so Andu might be good enough. I can't double Sweeper if the first one doesn't work. But we haven't seen any Counterspell. Though they haven't really had much of an opportunity to use one. How did I cut it? Oh, I was opening this bottle, and I just cut my finger on the on the cap, I guess. I don't know how, but... Okay, what did my opponent just do? Oh, they ran in seven for all the lands in their hand, and it looks like there was... Wow, they had all lands but five cards. They had 20-something lands in their hand? Wow, that's crazy. Wow, wow. Alright, I mean, they can just probably cast anything. Now, if it wasn't for the Provisioner, we maybe would have been alright. But now they can basically cast anything. So they've, they've found their Ulamog if they have it, and I don't really have an answer to it. But if it wasn't for that, Ondu might have been good enough. I mean, they also probably have counter spells. Or just any way to stop my Ulamog would be nice, too. Crater Hoof Behemoth uh, would do it, too. Alright, so now they're going to find whatever just wins the game. I don't know what that could be. Alright, they're going to steal my Ulamog. That doesn't necessarily end the game. At all. Um, let's see, I can sweep the board and then, like... Hmm. Yeah, they're doubling their landfall triggers, yeah. Yep, that's fine. They don't have haste. Okay, so this... Uh... Kills me, yeah. And they do have Crater Hoof, and they didn't draw it either, it was just still in the deck. Well, they didn't have to steal my stuff to kill me with that. In fact, they could have just made the green spell, like, bigger, and that would have done it too. We're dead regardless of the mass manipulation. Alright. Not much I can do about all of that. Uh, Settle the Wreckage would be, I guess, decent if I had it. I lose a bunch of cards, though, and it doesn't really turn the game around for us. Okay, so I'm going to drop Settle the Wreckage, and I'm going to drop, I think, um, I think we could, might even drop Liberator, too. Return to Nature. Drop some of these Naturalize effects, and then add maybe a little bit more Ramp spells. Because there are some we're not running. Always go for the most damage, yeah. I think it would have been more damage... If they... No, it would have been... The, the line they took was more damage than the line uh, that was faster. We could run Finale and then just... I guess we could just try Finale. Why not? Not terrible. Migration's Path probably just belongs in here. Uh, da -da -doo, da -da -doo. Sterling Grove can tutor for enchantments. Giving my enchantments hexproof is kind of useless, but... Or, or shroud, or whatever. Uh, we did get an Ajani ultimate, finally. That's pretty nice. I just like the card because of the ultimate slowly just running away with the game. But I guess the, the opponents you play it against just have easy answers to you being able to do that. And if it's like a creature-based opponent, you don't have time 
Yeah, I think we could drop a Johnny. I just, the ultimate, I just find it very satisfying. But it's not really all that good. I don't like Simulacrum too much. But I guess for now, we'll just toss it in. Yeah, we are getting the Mana 4 finale. So, we could try Crater Hoof if we feel like that can just win the game out of nowhere sometimes. I just don't have a lot of creatures. It doesn't take many, but I guess we can try Crater Hoof. I just don't, I don't know. It's like a one card combo instead of like the weird Sisse thing. What else has not been amazing? I haven't really used the Green Dragon yet. Uh, old Gnawbone might be decent, too. Mm -mm. Overwhelming Splendor wouldn't have stopped Finale from killing us. No, I don't want to change anything else. It's about where I want it. Green-white. I could go maybe more into white, closer to the Wandering Emperor list I was playing. So I could, uh, maybe there's a better way to slow the game down with that, but I don't think so. I could just go full mid-range and play just Elder Gargarosh, Gargaroth, the, the slime, uh, all the weird four and five minute creatures, just keep casting them until my opponent dies but uh, I might fall asleep doing that I somewhat like this hand it's against a red green deck mm, mm, alright I'm going to keep it these are alright against them this will probably flip and block opponents on the play with the best card of all time it's unfortunate does this make them cheaper? it doesn't Okay. they have Magda in hand oh boy how exciting. Wow, look how important that Lanor Elves is, huh? Okay, so we can play our own thing here. Or we can just do this. I'm not ramping into anything. So I'm just going to do this instead. I'm just not ramping into anything. Uh, hmm. I guess we'll take Seal Away? Get rid of you? I could get rid of Arcane Signet and then pick it up with uh, this thing. That's, that's alright. Hmm. I might just have to Skyclave next turn so I don't, like, die. I have to stop them from using this, too. Yeah, I kind of just have to play Skyclave Apparition. So I don't die. We can Haro next turn. Haro into restoration of a do 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 do. Probably get rid of Colossus. Really doesn't seem like a game for it. I could just play Yashar next turn to stonewall my opponent. Or at least slow them down. Alright, it'd be kind of weird if they just left up Stomp and didn't do anything. But it looks like that is going to be the case. Kind of weird to me. Um, Now that I drew that, I kind of want to play this. Well, obviously I'm playing this regardless first. Let's get rid of you. Get a white and a green. Yeah, maybe double white. I can also just leave up Seal Away if I think I'm going to die, but I don't think I will. Yeah, we're just going to cast this while we can. It's nice to have a creature develop after I have swept the board. I think that's a pretty good place to be. Oh, I was going to get a Plains from this. I probably should have got a Forest off the Haro. Not terribly relevant. Still have a green source here, and I don't really need another green source anyways, but... Kind of annoying. Does the counter come on? It does. They do get a counter on the token. That's really bad. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. That is not what we wanted to see. 
All right, don't have a weird, annoying haste threat, please. Just cast the giant or something. Oh, boy. Yeah, a bunch of treasures next set. Yeah, I can see it. There's no way you don't just make a 3-3, three, three, right? You always make a 3-3. Three, three. There's no way you don't. You're not really doing anything else with this commander, right? Like, what are what are lands doing for you? Yeah, I don't understand. That doesn't make sense to me. Should probably just made a 3-3. Three, three. Well, I would have at least. Alright, let's get rid of the planes, I think. Pick up the arcane signet. And then sweep the board so I'm not dead. And then play an untapped source and leave up steel away for a nonsensical haste threat, I guess. Instead of playing this, which doesn't do too much here. We don't have any lands for the Colossus, but it still is decently large. Now, the tokens they're making aren't massive, because they're not really a ramp deck. This is a really weird card to see. I don't... Uh, it's just weird. Return all permanents from your graveyard to your hand, which I guess is all the creatures. Uh, okay. That's not good. Alright, now my opponent makes a token. Okay, so... This is bad. Get two lands... Maybe use them for this Colossus at some point. Cast this? Or just play it as a land, leave up Seal Away? Guess we're doing that. the heck is this? Trample haste enters counters and the number of turns begun since it was foretold. Okay. I guess I double blocked the Harbinger. Why are you swinging with this? That's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know what that means. All right, well, I'm going to trade then. Uh, Can I take six and go to two? I mean, maybe. I guess I kind of have to just take risks at this point, given the nature of the game, so... Guess I should have double blocked it. Silly me. Can't say I expected that card in any way. Okie dokie. Well, I guess I'm not trading. Yeah, I guess I just should have blo double blocked. I guess it was free, but I kind of wanted to keep the architect just alive. Now I can't really do that. Alright, so I can make my own giant token. I can just do it with this as well. Guess this is just a little bit better so I can draw some cards. But this is not looking good. Of course, only drew two.
They didn't zero Ren in seven there. They also played a land before they plussed it, which is kind of weird, because they found a man land that would have been nice to just have in play. Now they just minused it? What? Then why'd you play a land? Oh, they come in tapped otherwise? Oh, okay, I guess. Kind of weird. Ren in seven in my opponent's deck is, makes no sense. They have, like, burn spells and this stuff. Like, it doesn't make a lot of sense here. But uh, I guess it's doing kind of decent work. It did kind of unflood them, sort of. It's like, they were going to draw five lands in a row, and now they're not. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Just play it because you're green. All right, that can immediately make a 5-5, five five, but it cannot give it haste. And I can sweep the board now, and I can maybe kill Ren in 7. Oh boy. Okay. They have another prey upon effect? I, I just don't know what's going on. Alright, opponent found lethal with a 2 2, because we're at 2. They give it haste, they swing all out, I block block when I'm dead to the 2 2. If they don't like potato their attack. It doesn't matter where it goes, just put it on something and swing. Just make them, uh, make them do it right. There you go, figured it out. That's annoying. That's annoying. Died to a 2-2. It could have been probably a, a bunch of different things, but... We almost stabilized. They had, like, if we untap there, we sweep the board and potentially kill Ren and Seven. It's not like it was doing anything except drawing lands, so it wasn't even all that terrifying in the uh, context of things. But they also happened to have like a an amazing opener. They had turn they were on the play with Land or Elves. Then the next turn they could play a three mana commander on turn two. And then they could play a bunch of creatures that were cheap and early. And then when we dealt with it, they suddenly turned into this like deck that costs five and more. Like, they started drawing and playing things that were uh, more expensive. Which, when you're playing those expensive creatures, they don't work very well with the cheap creatures. And it doesn't... They don't really tend to want to be in the same deck. And our opponent drew perfectly. So they had the early game early, and then they had the late game late. Which, I guess, if you expect that to happen all the time, then their, their deck is amazing. Just uh, not something you should ever uh, rely on. It's just not not an expected outcome. All right, Hanada's a weird one. Hanada is weird. Probably not great for us because there's probably counter spells, but there's not much I can do about it. Let's get... Uh, I guess I really want to land here, so I'll just get a plans. It's fine. Not really looking for anything. The Lamog will probably come to us eventually, maybe. Barring any Teferi. Alright, play land, cast this, get another forest. I wonder if they play their commander on curve. Well, I guess they can't because they played a temple, but... Nope, Goldspan Dragon. That does not... Does not just outright kill me, though. I kind of want to play Nyssa, but might not have the ability to now. So let's play land. We go one, two. Go like this. Plus with a planes, so I can Teferi's Protection myself. Swing for five. And then hopefully protection is good enough. I'll let them hit Nyssa with Goldspan Dragon before I cast Teferi's Protection. Although maybe I just shouldn't. I don't know. It, it either does or doesn't like get countered anyways. Also, Nyssa isn't actually all that amazing here.
All right, we get to untap with it. But my opponent has a ton of mana still. Uh, let's tap here. Let's see if this works first. And if it doesn't... I don't know. Let's find out. Let's think about other things later. You have Magma Opus? Oh, you have Sublime Epiphany. Of course you do. <sighs> oh, they have one of the two... Ah, uh, whatever. I'm wasting my time. I could have floated mana before Nissa got bounced so I could recast it, but it's still dead and that doesn't do anything. Just, just whatever. They had it's either Magma Opus or Sublime Epiphany. The rest of the deck is just never really all that terrifying to me. I, I just don't think Hinata is very good. But if you have one of those two cards, it's insane. And they had one. I usually do kind of just beat Hinata. Um, sometimes I beat those two cards as well. If the game goes on long enough. But if they have them super early, they also had a way to ramp insanely fast in Jeskai. With the Goldspan Dragon, I could not answer. So it's just, it just, just literally nothing I can do. Okay, that's a weird one. That's a weird commander. Hmm. Approach really likes being our hand. We have a sweeper this time. Uh, if they are like a rogue uh, ninjutsu thing, which they tend to like be, kind of. Yeah, I don't think Yasharn would have done it. I mean, they could have just countered it anyways. But yeah, it would stop the treasure tokens from being cracked. But I, it's just not... I don't think that uh, that was going to work. I don't think at the time. They just counter it with Sublime Epiphany. I get, like, maybe the turn early. Turn earlier, maybe? I don't know. I don't think I'm getting anywhere with doing that. I also think they have probably either a bounce spell or burn spell in hand, and it's over again. Alright, we have Cave of Le Frost Dragon. Ooh, Fortel. Spicy. Alright, so play this and Fortel here. This can be one of three. Extra turn, scry two, draw two, or saw it coming. It's pretty much never, ever anything else ever. Only like the blue and white foretell cards like ever see play. Uh, probably a control deck though, given what we're looking at. A bit of a... Might be a bit of a bind for us. I'm always happy when our opponent counters ramp spells and stuff. Uh, this is a little bit more than a ramp spell, but... It's always nice to see. Oh, they didn't do it. Rip. Tails in the trigger. Oh, opponent. Toxic. All right, so we can just discard the land to the thing, and then it is basically a white ramp spell in that regard. They did not bounce the enchantment. That's interesting. Poison the cup. Yeah, I don't think it's poison the cup. In fact, I'm... Uh, it's, it's, it's not Poison the Cup. <laughs> it's never Poison the Cup. Let's be real. That is not Poison the Cup. Right, get rid of you. Put it in play. Come on, opponent. You can do it. Come on. Come on. There you go. Okay. No land on the top. Ren and Seven is very good against them. Uh, just it's a matter of it resolving. But if it doesn't resolve, they're not flashing in their commander because it can't resolve. Uh, they could ninjutsu the... Oh, nope. 
Alright, so they're probably not ninjutsu, it's safe to assume. Oh, they just didn't have a land, huh? Interesting. Um, I guess with that, they'll counter basically anything at this point, and what's the least... What do I miss the least? Probably this. If I get this in the graveyard, I'm happy. If Yasharn gets countered, I can just cast it again later. But again, I think anything I'm going to do gets countered, so let's just force them to counter my commander. I think they have Tails End, because they're like holding priority at weird times. Although it could just be a removal spell as well. Alright. Yep. Uh, command Zone, yep. And two. Yeah, I have not seen Poison the Cup in a minute. Alright, so we knew they just drew a land. Apparently they have choices that are not their commander. Their commander stonewalls my attack, because it, it's a 4-4. So I guess I have to make it so they just can't reliably cast it by just playing things. We don't have a graveyard for them to steal, which is kind of nice, I guess. Found the land, that's huge. Alright, so can play this and then play Faith Bound Judge. Guess I will. I think that's better than Renin 7. Especially if I can find a time to cast Renin 7, that is not it, just dying to the stack. If this resolves, I cannot attack. So I'm playing it pre combat, so if my opponent counters it, I know I can attack. Shoot. Alright, so hoping for no removal spell then. Well, I mean, it would be kind of the same as a counter spell, except I just hadn't been able to attack. Well, as long as I don't have a graveyard, their commander really isn't all that scary. It's good on them, though. Because, again, we know about this 4 4. They gotta be careful killing this judge and having no answer to the enchantment or the curse, whatever you want to call it. Okay, well, they can't steal and then play it, so if we can find a way to stop that... Oh, uh, we can't, though. Yeah, they have a counter spell up. Guess I can try, though. If I can, like, get this approach through, maybe. Yeah, this doesn't seem reliable. I wish I could double up on my stuff, though. I just can't double up on my... Oh, wow, you stole that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I would not have done that. Okay. Okay. You're convinced it's Epiphany? <laughs> oh, dude, you're... You got more faith than I do. Alright, this is an opportunity to double up on my threats. And I think it's maybe more important to actually develop the Doomscar, having that resolved instead. So maybe I play Renin 7 first. My opponent stole this and has no planes to get. Like, this doesn't really do anything for them. This is actually really... No, alright. I think the two... Hmm. The fact that they stole this makes me want to just... Dooms... No, but they'll let that resolve. What if we just didn't do anything and cast Approach? What if we just did that? No, that seems reckless. I want to capitalize on my opponent having done very little of consequence... Uh, this is soon to start attacking. Alright, let's just cast this. Let's just cast this. It's snap resolved. Nice. Alright, so we... Make a giant 3-3. Three, three, and then we ramp. Or do we... No, we'll just get, like, an enchantment now. Kind of worse than our opponent knows. Oh, they have a... They had something that can deal with Tutor, but not Renin 7? What is it? Spell Pierce? Uh, the counter target instant or sorcery? No? Alright. When they know about this, it gets a little bit worse, I'd say. But they still have to answer. Rest in Peace denies their commander from ever stealing my stuff. But I don't think Rest in Peace is terribly relevant. And I'm fine if they just cast this. Because again, it's not doing anything at all for them. Other than denying my access to it. Because I can't get it back. But it doesn't. It doesn't actually do anything for them. I can't believe Renin 7 just snap resolved. Alright, so yeah, I guess it is Epiphany then. It's not the other two cards. It has to be Epiphany. 
Interesting. We have a safe attack, finally. Uh, this doesn't do anything but go up. Yep, nowhere to go but up. Before I play a land, because I might still find one off the top. Oh, man, there goes Ulamog. Rip. Let's play that. And then swing. It's not like they're going to block it. Faithbound Judge can almost start attacking as well, which is kind of cool. I highly doubt they'll block this, at least not with the two things in play. I don't know. Alright, so kind of want to just cast this. If my opponent wants to counter this, I think that's good. I guess with that in mind, I should uh, cast into the north first. But I think it's better to have approach at a random point in my deck than at the top. Because my opponent can sync up counter spells to make it so this never resolves. And I would like to have the ability to randomly draw it off the top. And just have it, having this looming eternal threat that my opponent has to leave up mana for for the rest of the game seems like a good play. <laughs> or they can just counter the front half. Be kind of weird, but I guess you could do that. Okay, the greatest card of all time again. So we lose our token this time? No, you should probably kill my token. No, no, you should take my token. I do not like this. Uh, I guess it makes it so it's easier to kill my commander, my uh, planeswalker though. All right, I guess that makes some sense. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I guess I'll get a man land instead. I don't think I need the colors. I think that's fine. All right, so they stole all our stuff, I guess. <laughs> Chooses to not swing at me for four. Very interesting. This is a scenario where they might not want to... It's kind of telling that they at least don't cast the auger, right? Kind of interesting. Wow, they really just don't want me to resolve this Splendor, I guess. Alright, I'll lead with an attack, because they probably are going to block it or at least kill this, and if I can just force them to do that. Really? You just take it? Then what was the point of not attacking with these? Kinda weird. Okay, let's see if this works. I don't think it possibly can. We're not really getting back anything crazy, though, under the hostage takers. But there's no reason for them to leave all that mana up and then not use it, so. I have to cast something, otherwise they get to cast Zareth and start stealing our stuff, which obviously we can't really afford to happen. Feel like the Fortell wolves fit your style? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, land this thing or land this thing I guess I'll do this thing because it just draws me cards yeah that's fine they're both legendaries might as well just cast this one could have played land pre-combat just didn't opponent nimble obstructionists my Ability to find two lands. That is extremely strange to me. But I guess that's the only thing it's reasonably doing. So I guess that makes sense. Just kind of weird. Alright, so we, they finally found another land here. and It's a temple. They've been doing just fine with the amount of lands they have, though. Uh, that one lets them cast Epiphany, though. I don't have the ability to kill the board, but I have to force them to constantly counter my stuff, I guess. I can almost kill them with a man land. Oh, not anymore. They finally played stuff. Well, I mean, there's no way you tap out. That doesn't make any sense.
They do not swing with Brazenbauer. It literally can't do anything, so that's kind of weird. I will swing doubly. Doubly swing. Both are lethal attackers. Both must be blocked. Or killed. Brazenbauer can't block, so I don't know why they didn't swing with it. Unless they thought I was going to play a Haste Dragon in my green-white deck. Hmm. Alright. I don't want my man lands to get killed by removal spells. I don't think that's worth it currently. So I'm going to avoid doing that. I will play this over the Splendor because this is a lethal threat. Uh, and I just think it's fine to just present that instead. Uh, can demand a board wipe by just playing out another creature. And I think it's fine to scape shift. Wait a minute. Okay, I can sacrifice lands. Yasharn doesn't deny that ability. And I think it's fine to just do that. We're not utilizing most of these anyways. One, two, three, four, five, six. The rest are worth keeping. It's just thin our deck of six lands. One, two, three, four, five, and temple. There we go. Let's get some value on my deck. Uh, that's not very useful. So my opponent does get an extra turn if that's what they're willing to do. I'm sure it's kind of just free. But this is another scenario. If they do cast it, it's an example where it just doesn't really do anything except draw you a card and make two 1-1s. One one Alright, so remember, we've cast Approach once this game, right? Did it resolve? I can't even remember. No, they countered it. They countered approach, right? How did they do it? They sublime epiphany. Gotcha. All right. So if I ever pick it up and cast it, it works. Because uh, I've already cast it once this game. The first time you cast it, it doesn't have to resolve. Okay. Um. It's lethal to just attack. But I can maybe force out another... I don't know. I think this is worth it pre-combat. I think this is worth it pre-combat. It gives me more information of how they just go about their turn. And I can fire up a little baby uh, Hydra. That was the actual card I was thinking of. That was the card I did not want to see. Only they probably have Gear Hulk. And of course they do. Opponent has drawn every single like 6 plus mana card in their entire deck. Great. They get to copy Gear Hulk too. It's relentlessly annoying. And I am one land short from cleansing, cleansing Nova E. But I guess it's a good thing I didn't attack. But now we're probably just dead. Okay, it can't. It really can't be that hard. Just pick the pick the options. They're, they're they're on the card. Just click the gear hole, bounce one of my creatures, draw a card. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not that hard. Well, I guess there's an argument to taking hostage taker as a, co a copy instead of the gear Hulk, but that seems stupid. So you should probably just copy gear Hulk because it's better. Yeah. No, gear Hulk. Taking a copy of Gear Hulk is just better. Oh my god. Well, I guess I'll finally pour that drink. Oh, they're back. Look at that. Never mind. They figured it out. They also did something I would never in a million years do, so no second Gear Hulk for whatever reason. Okay, well, you could have just copied Gear Hulk and bounced it, 
so I don't. Okay. Um, they have a five six now, so no attack. I can uh, just leave up. I don't know. Just I mean, there's nothing to do, so I'll just pass anyways. Can fire layer the Hydra, but they probably could have had another Gear Hulk in play at some point. All right, it looks like they're choosing not to cast Epiphany. I feel like I could have died in this turn cycle, and I just am now not dead. I'm going to put a counter on the blast zone. I'm going to put a counter on the... Whoop, whoop. can only put one, so that's what I'll do. Alright, uh, I still have a lethal flyer, like as a threat at some point, but I kind of have to just deal with the board. Um... Yeah, we're going to try to deal with the board again. Destroy all creatures. I can pick it up and cast it again. Alright, so they let this resolve, which means they have 5 mana for their commander, which I can't really let resolve. I can't let it hit me, but I don't have a choice now. I don't really know what else to do. They can steal Ulamog with their commander, but it doesn't immediately win the game. And then I can, like, put this in play and do something. I think it's better to just force... Force at the very least some kind of removal. I can just pick up Ulamog so they can't do that. I think that's fine. We can just pick it up. This makes a token when it dies, so I can demand two removal spells, but that seems real easy for this stupid deck. And I can't afford to die to this card, so I'm picking it up. I see what my opponent's trying to do here, and I'm going to try to just not die to that. Now, there's still problematic stuff in my graveyard, but... I mean, I don't really have a choice. Oh boy, here we go. So they take an extra turn, but they need a land to also do something else in the same turn cycle. Probably not impossible. I wouldn't. I don't want to see a a uh, discard spell. Would kind of suck. There's nothing to pick up in their graveyard, so they can just pitch a land here and then just reanimate the land. I guess. Looks like they don't. Found a land, though, so they can take an extra turn. Two mana removal spell is a problem. An exile effect. Uh, okay. Well, they take Overwhelming Splendor, doesn't do anything. Renin 7 makes a token that's a little bit annoying. Probably just take this Renin 7? I think that's what you take here. They're not taking an extra turn, though. I feel like you always take Run in 7. Nope, they take Overwhelming Splendor. I don't think I would take this. It doesn't really do all that much against me. Not too much, especially when I can potentially just mess it up with Ulamog, but we'll see. The fact that they take this makes me think that they probably won't let me resolve Ulamog. But we'll see. Okay. Um, that's a pretty good one, but I want the guarantee. So I will do that. <laughs> yep, kind of a weird choice from the opponent if this was the outcome. Kind of strange. I'm sure there's another, at the very least, another exile effect for Ulamog here. I'll hold on to this uh, land... And now if my opponent ever really taps out, they're just dead to any man land. So they got to be a little bit careful, but it might be easy for them. We'll see. Yep. 
This is a three drop or a zero? I'm not sure. Oh, it's a three drop. All right, so now I have to somehow kill them with man lands. Probably. Probably. I could sweep the board and get rid of this nonsense. Guess I'll just try to do this first. If this resolves, we're in a very good spot. Because they have to answer this regardless, so I might as well force it. We have Blast Zone too. I think it's better to just play Oracle. Opponent has really been putting like a lot of time into their turns. If we were on the chess clock, I think they would have ran out of time by now. Rest in Peace is weird. It stops their commander, but that might not be terribly useful. I don't know, we'll see. I don't I think we're past that point anyways, so. Alright, they found a way to kill this, not really surprising. We are somewhat low. We are somewhat low. Could be an issue, we'll see. Rest in peace is decent. Midnight clock won't shuffle in any poop either. They have the mana to cast their commander again, but as long as I don't let them reanimate crap, I guess that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's cast this. Alright, well, now we're dead to any removal spell, but I can't really do anything about it. So, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. Play a land, pass the turn. Yep, just dead to removal spell. Looks like they don't have it. That's good. I don't know what their hand is, but they scried two on the top. I highly doubt we're going to kill them with this judgment, but it was, uh, was kind of close, I guess. We're going to lose this sweeper, I guess, which we couldn't really cast if we wanted to keep our judgment in play. Man, this has been a crazy game, but... I don't think we're going to see another turn here. They take the sweeper, so I guess we are going to see another turn? They took my sweeper? Okay, they found an answer to the judgment. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, they must just not have what I think they have. We could just try to, like, windmill slam kill them with the man land, and at this point maybe that's just worth it. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I don't think we have enough white mana. Let's just do that. It's funny how, like, this architect is just in, in play for our opponent. It just looks funny. They have five mana untapped. Um... I don't know why they're playing Elspeth's Nightmare in a Zareth deck, because you make your opponent lose their graveyard, and then you you can't, like, kill them with it. We can just threaten lethal with some man lands, and we have so many that maybe we can try to activate more than one. But that doesn't seem super exciting. But I guess I don't have a choice. So I can fire this one up and then the Faceless Haven. I think I'm flying for three no matter what. 
and then activate Faceless Haven as well. I can even activate the other one for two, but that doesn't seem very useful. All right, so this forces them to block everything. Though killing Ujin seems like a better idea anyways. Do that. Go here. I guess I actually couldn't swing with the Faceless Haven. I guess that was a mistake. I should have realized. I'm not using my mana for anything, but... Yeah, that was... I probably should have fired up the Lair of the Hydra then. Because I can't really swing with this. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. That's my bad. Shouldn't have fired that one up. Back to thinking, I guess. What did they choose? Minus three, minus three, and return a permanent. Okay, so this is minus three, minus three. This is going back to my hand. Okay, so I'll use the mana to, like, blast zone. Put a counter on blast zone. I guess. Okay. That was strange. And then, yep, go to the next step. Uh, play treasure map and scry one at some point. Might as well do it now, I guess. Oseju, little too slow, is not really doing much. Midnight Clock can now flip if my opponent just dumps mana into it. Yeah, maybe it is Poison the Cup, because they haven't taken an extra turn yet. I don't know. I mean, we're dead if it's Epiphany, so it's not Epiphany. We would have died if it was Epiphany. Literally would have just died. That was a really bad draw. Um, I can just activate Blast Zone and force my opponent to dump mana into Midnight Clock. That doesn't seem like I'm doing anything useful, though. I can search with Inventor's Fair? No, I need another artifact. Um, Can draw a card off of Enclave? I don't know what we're looking for. I think, I don't know, I think I should have just been dead a while ago. My opponent just, for some reason, didn't make a copy of Gear Hulk and drag this game out. Alright, I guess I'll just draw a card here. That's not great. Play this. Um, Activate Blast Zone. Blow up all the three mana crap. Alright, they didn't use the Midnight Clock. I don't know why. Let's see if we can hit them. Or I mean, it doesn't really matter what I swing at. They're just going to block it, so I'll just swing just to kill a creature. And then I cultivate So we're one off from being dead because they can cast their commander. But that's not dead dead. I can also just leave up lair for one. No, I can't. I don't have three on tap. Okay, you can swing for five. Ulamog has been long gone. They don't swing at the 1-1. One, one. I guess that makes sense. If I somehow dealt with a 2-2 two, two and they had no way to stop me from hitting them for 4, that'd be a bad news bears. 
put a stop here. Probably have to scry my upkeep because we're looking for I don't even know what. Slayer's Bounty is maybe able to buy us a turn with the manlands and stuff. So I guess I'll keep that. Oh, I can't sacrifice it because of Yasharn, so actually it's just useless. We're just banking on uh, the manlands being useful again. I just have to block with the manlands to stay alive, but I don't know what we're... our outs are. Like, what are we getting towards? I don't know. Yeah, we were never really in a spot where we could just close the game out with a manland. We got close, though. But we never really got there. Never, never really got there. Okay, I'll scry, see what's on top. Yasharn is now preventing me from doing a lot of things here, which is unfortunate. I can sweep the board again, but I'm pretty sure my opponent can cast their commander again. Let's see, how much did they cast it for last time? This is the third time? How much was this last time they cast it? Seven or nine? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They have eleven mana. So I'm pretty sure they can cast this again, and then I can't sweep the board. So there goes that option. I don't want to just be done with this game. I don't think we're... I think we're just spinning our wheels here. It should tell me. Whoops. I should not have been there. This commander costs four more the next time it is cast. Four more. So it's nine the next time. Okay. That means I cannot do what I want to do. What we could do is rely on Slayer's Bounty to do the right thing. Could try that. So maybe there's something there. I don't know. Let's find out what happens when I do this. Pretty sure it cost nine, yep. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they can recast it. So I can look for some kind of answer to Zareth off this, and if that doesn't do it, I can finally move on with my life. Which I probably should have done a while ago. Uh this sorted? Well no it doesn't. I mean it does. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> I guess this does it. Barring any counterspell at all, <laughs> we can iron verdict there. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not drawing anything, so whatever. If it was un, if I could do this to a tapped creature, we'd be in a good spot. But unfortunately, they get to untap their mana first, so I can't really do that. So let's see if iron verdict is good enough. I highly doubt it, though. Our opponent has drawn two cards a turn the past eight turns, and. We never found out what that foretell card is, but it probably is uh probably is that one card we were saying. I don't know what else it could be. <laughs> Just please cast a counter spell so I can move on. There you go, buddy. Alright, so what was the foretell card? What? That was... Yeah, alright. I mean, okay. Uh, wow. Turgrid Shadow. I didn't even know that card existed. That would explain why they never cast it. Ever. Because it was always bad. <laughs> that was always bad. That game lasted quite a while, though it didn't really have to last that long if my opponent just played a little bit faster there. Um, 
But they didn't, so we slogged through that all. That's unfortunate. Still kind of a... Kind of a cool thing. I really wish Uber Eats would not tell me about the sign-up thing. It's like, oh, you get a discount if you sign up. Like, I'm not going to sign up, so just stop asking me to sign up. I'm not going to do it. Or I will, and I'll get the one discount, and then I'll just unsign up again. Like, it's just... It's such a stupid notice. It makes me want to uninstall the app, honestly. Uh, and just go and order Uber Eats through my computer every time. Easy enough. So I stopped getting that stupid notice. Alright, well, we move on. Another blue-black deck here. Um, hmm. We're on the draw and don't have a lot going on. But I kind of like this. It makes it tough for our opponent to, like, disrupt what we're doing with any discard spells and stuff. Because our hand isn't doing anything. So. That was a pretty back-and-forth game, for sure. Uh, after the Gear Hulk, though, everything was pointless, because I'm pretty sure my opponent could have just straight killed us and just chose not to by making uh, the wrong decision. It's like copying the other card for some reason instead of literally copying Gear Hulk and doing insane things twice. I probably would have scooped if they did that, too. Alright, this is a really weird card. I don't know what's going on. My opponent has one of the, I believe, seven... Ninjutsu cards in the game, yep. And it's a really good one. Um, let's just do this. That's fine. Discard a Fable Passage? Alright. Just play lands. Just put a 4 4 in play so I'm not getting hit, I guess. <laughs> Never mind. Guess we're gonna lose to this card. Wow. Yep. That's great. Alright, well, if that doesn't work, we're dead. Or we're just dead anyways, and it doesn't matter. You have another ninjutsu card, too? Gee, what an interesting game. Okay, yep. I guess when you uh, are on the play with the thing that swings for 40 turn 4, I can't win. Guess I needed a sweeper. We drew very well for having like nothing going on to start, but my opponent just played the probably the only card in their entire deck that actually kills us before like turn 10. They, they literally have the, the only card that they could kill us with damage in their entire deck. And something to do jutsu with it. And on the play. If it wasn't for any of those three things, we could have actually played that game. But they had all three, so... That's unfortunate. I guess we get to move on fast, though. Alright, so back to Hinata. There's only, again, like two, maybe three seriously threatening spells the rest of the deck is honestly kind of a joke <laughs> don't tell him i said that but it's just just like generic chess guy stuff i mean teferi as teferi is an issue too but oh oh there goes the jaw oh just popped my jaw kind of hurt all right so we'll get a land here play arcane signet and then play wilt Actually, the last Jeskai Hinata deck had uh, a thousand ways to ramp, too. It's kind of funny. I mean, this is only one, but it was on curve. Oh, it's another ramp spell. 
Well, all right, so we'll play this into Yasharn. I could play this to start drawing, but this draws cards immediately and obviously gives me land drops. This makes it so they cannot sacrifice the Mind Stone if I somehow find a way to blow it up, which I currently do not have. I can't target Hanada because it costs one to target their stuff, I think. Uh, yeah, it costs one to target their stuff, so I can't. That's no bueno. That is an issue. Hopefully I get to deal with it with this card. If not, it is what it is. All right, we do. That's nice. I think they still get to activate it once. Yeah. They can randomly generate a sword that I believe is a colorless in cost. I believe it's colorless in cost. Looks like they might not have it. Um, of these two, this one's a little bit better. If I ever recast Yasharn and have to wind up using this for like... I don't know, it gives you Sharn like haste, basically, pseudo haste, kind of. They have to start doing things maybe this turn cycle, or else we get Elspeth Conquer's death to really tax them. Alright, so it looks like they're not doing anything, and we get to kill you, Sharn. I mean, um, <laughs> we kill you, Sharn. Kill Hanada. We, well, I'll offer the trade, though. I will offer the trade. Yeah, I'm sure it, it's... I mean, I'm not doubting what is or isn't fun. I just... Uh, when it comes to, like, inefficient, scary Jeskai deck, Hanada's, like, the least scary Jeskai commander to me. Was my point. But I don't have a problem playing against it or anything like that. Alright, so they don't block. Means this might be kind of important, so I will deny the ability to have it in play. And then I will Primal Command, I think a land. So that, and then I'll find something. Let's tuck... Doesn't matter really which one. This one just cost mana to cast. So I guess I'll just tuck that one. And I'll tutor Ulamog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Almost there, but not quite. Honestly, nothing I can get is terribly exciting. Skyclave denies Hanada again. But I think we'll just get Ulamog. I think I'm feeling I think I'm feeling violent. Feeling aggressive. Feeling spicy. Just have that looming threat for our opponent to uh have lingering on in their head there. I think that's a good idea. Everything costs two more still for them. So if they do cast Mind Stone, it, I think it costs four right now. And they don't really want to kill Yasharn this turn cycle because I get to... Wow, they don't do anything. Really? Okay, well, I'm going to swing. Draw a card off of our thingy ma -boop. All right, well, I guess we did need a land. Uh, let's play this and draw another card, I guess. Oh, look at this. Look at all these card draw engines. Yes. Oh, another card draw engine. Or card draw spell. I think I'll just cast the ramp spell, though. Naming green or white. I guess white. We have a lot of green. Doesn't really matter between the two that much. Memory Deluge. Huh. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten mana now. So I guess taking Ulamog was a good idea. I don't expect it to really resolve, but if I can just cast it, I'm kind of happy. Okay, Mind Stone seems like a good sign. No, oh, maybe not. Just casting it for free, basically. That's fine. What's making that squeaky noise? I think I have too many cards on my desk, and so, like, any slight creak, and they all just start to, like, shuffle and dance around. <laughs> Epiphany? Oh, maybe not. What is that noise? Is it this keyboard? Okay, I'm going to break something if I start shifting around. Okay, so my opponent's willing to do this. I don't know what that means. 
but I am going to try to undo some of it. I'm doing this no matter what. Tails in? Probably just a counter spell though. Well, something that might mess up Ulamog as a creature and not the triggered ability. I don't know. Oh, they have the card. Sublime Epiphany. Of course they do. Like I said, this deck doesn't do anything except that every time. Gotta love it. <sighs> Literally, the game always boils down when you're playing against Sonata against the same two or three cards. It's just Epiphany, Magma Opus, and... Uh, oh, I guess Gearhulk, but... And, like, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria could be one of them, too. Okay, that's... Pretty scary. They're swinging? Whoa. Well, I guess they're never trading. Yeah, I guess they're just never trading. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna hit you for four. Alright, let's play this. No land on the top. Let's see if we can't find one off the top. Crawling Barons is pretty good. Another land. Uh, it's one that like could make angels. That could be a problem against my opponent. But it's also a card I'm drawing. But we, we can just play a man land. I think playing playing the man land is just better here. So we're going to do that. Uh, white. Yeah, we're not going to... We're not going to play that land off the top. Because I'm probably going to have to wind up making angels to just constantly threaten my opponent. To uh, just pull ahead here and just keep the pressure on. I think that's a good idea. Yep, they're certainly not blocking with that. They can't crack the Mind Stone because Yasharn's in play. I am going to swing with just this here. See what happens. Okay, yep. Yep. And then make some angels, I guess. And then crack this to see what's on top. If it's a land, I guess I'll hold on to it for the Zendikar. Zendikar's royal. When it gets to Deluge. Well, if they ever tap out on their turn, we can mess them up with one of these two man lands. Mythinks. Yeah, we get two tokens because uh, it sacrificed itself. Okie dokie. Shared summons for nothing. Crawling Barons twice. Yep. 
Sublime Epiphany, ladies and gentlemen. No other card mattered, again, which is the only thing that happens every time I play against Hanada. Magma Opus, Sublime Epiphany. Every time. All right. We'll play, like, one more game. These games have been kind of long. Well, and I guess just, like, two of them. Most haven't been all that long. Not really. Imagine they didn't have Sublime Epiphany. Imagine it was literally just counter-target spell. Would have been uh, way better off. But nope. I have a turn 3 and a turn 4 decent blocker against Muxus. This was quite nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quite nice. So I think I'm going to keep it on the merit of just that. I think that's fine. Uh, play this. Probably just cycle Wilt next turn. Well, unless they play something that's worth blowing up. Well, I mean, I can just Wilt a treasure token. Seems kind of stupid, but... It's Goblin, so it's not like the game's going to go along. Wilt the Willy Goblin token. It's another mana source. Okay. Obviously would have liked to blown that one up instead, but we don't have said ability. So we play two four fours in a row, and then maybe Nissa can defend me long enough where I don't just die out of nowhere. Next turn they can cast Muxus, but unless they hit one of the two massive haste things. Oh, wait a minute. That gives haste. Alright, so... Well, I mean, it doesn't... They can't activate it, so it doesn't really matter. Let's do this, do that. Alright, we have two four fours. And some pooping in. So we can... Whoop, whoop find something maybe eventually we can find uh Elspeth Conquer's death to eat Muxus as well Pillar of Origins Okay Volley Veteran Okay That is another decent threat uh, maybe playing Nissa is a little bit better than that. Nissa probably won't live, but Nissa is a decent distraction. I can untap a plains here as well instead of a forest, so I have just more mana to play with the next turn. Obviously not using the two mana this turn. Uh, now if they have a land... Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. They have a land we might be in a... Oh, okay. All right, they didn't hit a uh, haste threat, but they did hit a siege gang commander, which is probably just good enough. I just need to find a sweeper, and I don't have one in hand, and I don't think I can reliably find one. I just sort of have to draw it. Okay, they really just don't want Nissa to live, I guess. That yeah, kind of makes sense, although I'm not really using all that mana for anything. Okie dokie. Nissa is dead. That's not a board wipe. This doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. I can't tutor for anything useful. I can play Yasharn again and then literally die. Uh, nope, we're dead. We. Is there anything I can just ideally tutor for? I don't think so. Splendor would be good if it was, you know, turn 20. Nope. Alright. Uh, maybe could have Mulligan for a sweeper, just because that's kind of how these matchups boil down to where literally nothing matters except casting a sweeper but uh we had blockers they just literally they had like deal four damage red spells and there's not too many they had two of them one for like the goblins in play which they got exactly four and then the other one which was just deal four which not only dealt four to our blocker it also allowed them to uh cast it for free they they were allowed they were able to cast their commander in the same turn cycle so we didn't really get any sort of breathing room so everything just everything lined up extremely well for my opponent we're against heliod okay so this is even more streamlined and smooth brained than red cuz they don't really amass cards at all it's just like your hand has to do it or you lose we do need a second white source. We only have one with the 
with this here. I mean, we have it with the Yasharn. I'd rather Yasharn live before I cast at least my first board wipe. Does not seem to be the scenario in which we live in, though. All right, we sort of found it. It is kind of late to the party. Well, no, because we're not going to cast a sweeper turn three. Our opponent just didn't do anything. I don't know what that means. There's no, there's only like one flash creature, the three one. They didn't have it. What? Are the, I have no idea what's going on. I am very confused. I can blast zone to healer's hawk. I might just pop the healers. I might just pop that right now. I think I'm actually just going to do that. I think this makes sense. My opponent just isn't doing anything, so I don't think I have to. Uh-huh. I can play Yasharn as a blocker now. Soul Warden. Okay. Uh, this is probably a little bit better. Well, maybe not, because I'd like to actually block and make my opponent commit more into play as I go for this, go for something here. Although this way does make me discard a card, not really that relevant, I'll just get rid of the forest, obviously. So this is a game where we probably get to undo inversion as well, we might just have to undo inversion, and hope we don't die to that manland, though not terribly likely. the heck is this? Okay. They can give Soul Warden indestructible. And they were leaving up something turn two earlier, so there's a chance they have something now, but I don't think there's anything that stops a Wrath of God or Day of Judgment. I guess I can f play around Mana Tithe. That would be kind of weird, though. But So they can give Soul Warden indestructible... I guess. Uh huh. All right. Of course, they're never out of gas. That does not give devotion, though. What does this do? Many your M step. If you've gained life, you make a five five. Other horses are indestructible. Oh my god. Uh, yay. It is not my night. Okay, there we go. Do this. Pass the turn. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We can't undo yet. Another crazy threat. Another thing that generates tokens. Jeez. Now we're dead to a land, basically. Whatever. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Tried our best. <laughs> yep. Done. They can't even find lands either. Literally indestructible threats over and over. No, that's not true. Oh, yes, actually, they'd like to. And an answer with swords. Cool. Yep. Penultimate hand from the mono white deck. They beat what did they beat that time? They beat this. Yeah, that that's that's insane. That's just crazy. Like, you know. The swords was decent too. Not like the of everything they could have done wasn't like the best thing, but and uh, if we didn't use Blast Zone there, we really weren't gonna use it at any point, so I'm kinda of fine with where we used it. But uh, having been able to protect something and then giving it making a 5-5 five, five indestructible horse just okay can't beat that I needed another board wipe yep I needed another board wipe to uh, do something pretty sure yeah needed another board wipe which is just kind of crazy but I guess it is what it is Two isn't good enough. Although usually one is good enough. You don't really ever need more than one. Uh, let's play this here. Swords of Plowshares was an insane draw. That was a very good draw. Glad to see that. Let's play Explore, I think, while I have 
lands in him. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, oh, I could have kept Lesage you in hand to blow up Omniscience. Maybe, I don't know. Let's play this. Let's do this while we can. Alright, so we can just ramp into Ulamog, which is probably the only thing that matters in this game. Uh, let's play Nissa. I guess I could play this first, actually. They don't play Nissa. I don't really need Nissa. So hopefully they have a counterspell. And I think their deck is all counterspells, so it kind of makes sense for them to have a counterspell. Okay. Do they generate tokens at instant speed other than, like, Shark Typhoon? Because if they don't put a token now, I guess I'm not... Alright, so they found a way to make tokens. Um, I'd like to not die to said tokens. So I guess I have to sweep said tokens. Right? Can I play this first? Play a land? No. I can just do this, though. Yeah, we can do this, get some lands, and then swords whatever token they target. So they don't get the stupid combo. Combo nonsense there. Let's play this. Let's foretell. And pass. So now we can uh, sweep the board so they don't have a 6-6. Six, six. And slow them down. I believe I don't have much of a choice, so yes, let's just do that. Alright, so put this in the command zone. I think I'm going to scape shift. Should probably scape shift all my lands. Can I play this first? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to scape shift everything here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Make sure I don't screw my colors up. Five, six, seven, and Inventor's Fair? Yeah, we almost can activate it, so oh, why not? Scry for a land on the top. Eh, that is a ramp spell. I think we'll put it at the bottom, though. Kind of just looking looking for that untapped source, I think. They can't really memory, or at least I don't think they want to. I don't think I would. Hopefully that was their only form of tokens. <laughs> nope, of course not. Why would it be? No answer to this token, so have to like find something immediately. If I drew a land, that would have worked. Uh, there's no enchantment that stops this. I can go get... No, this exiles it, right? Forever? Yeah, so I can just put Rest in Peace in play. And just deny like some sort of Mizzix Mastery nonsense. Or just this literal memory from causing severe... Uh, Severe issues, maybe. But I can't stop it, so I don't know. Let's just bank on the two cards in hand being poop. And we don't just instantly lose. Although they probably foretold... Oh, no, they did not foretell an extra turn. But this is another two cards. I can Conqueror's Death the Omniscience as well, but that might not be, like, a good idea. I don't know. Alright, so they don't go for it, or they just didn't find a land. Not likely that to be the scenario, but that could have just been what happened. They just don't have a land. Okay. What is that card? If you have no lands and cards in your hand, seek a land. Oh, okay. Uh, Wilt blows up Omniscience, but it doesn't really do anything else. I don't even think that's good, but... Yeah, I guess we're just casting this now. Looks like they have, like, Lightning Bolt in hand. 
No, I can't. I mean, the omniscience issue is literally just losing before you get another turn when they cast it, which is the the main issue. Not really them just having it in play. Oh well, that's another answer to omniscience and the creature. It really just played the creature and then try to kill you with the stupid cards they get into play with it. Hopefully it's deep in the deck. Who knows? Maybe they scried it to the bottom just now, which would have been hilarious. They did not. Alright, but what did they lose? Negate, counterspell, counterspell, grow spiral, counterspell, counterspell, counterspell. Mizzix Mastery, unfortunately, which we don't want to see, but... Uh, might as well do this now. Just to... I mean, they're going to see less cards this way. Who knows? Very likely they have a counterspell, though. But Omniscience isn't really just outright killing us without them actually, like, doing something with it. There's no other permanents, right? And we haven't exiled an extra turn. They Prismari come in and blow up my tome? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, nothing. Alright, so it looks like looks like we get to untap here. Quite huge. Alright, let's see if this works. Yeah, it's the only permanent, so as long as I can answer it, I guess it's not a terrible idea to answer it. Oh boy. Okay, they wash away the actual card. Makes sense. Alright, so Ulamog is gone, but so is their massive threat. Uh, they can continuously cast this to, like, maybe kill us. Banefire could be in the deck, although X spells with Omniscience doesn't make any sense. But I think my my list had an, had a copy of it in there somewhere. Alright, so let's see if this resolves. Of course not. Um, can I cast this? No, I can play this and make tokens but I don't really want to get rid of that Emiria's call yeah we'll just uh, pass turn here We're, this is a three turn clock not a two turn clock which is uh, quite nice I will attempt to exile the creatures they draw four uh, okay was that a sorcery that is a sorcery, huh? Interesting. Emergent sequence. All right, so this is really good. This is, it could technically have been another serious threat that now we can answer. So we're glad to see it. We know it's safe to swing. Pact is out of the way. There's nothing they can do to counter it. No cards or no mana tapped. This is not modern. So exile all creatures and graveyards for good measure. I will play this. I will draw a card. That is not a great card. Hold on to this for angels, which might wind up being relevant. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Uh, I can hold on to this to give this two counters out of nowhere, maybe? Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine, I think. I guess with that in mind, I can still just draw. Okay. Oh, I should have played the land. That's my bad. I don't know why I, I, I tripped myself up. Oh, this has Death Touch, actually. So they really can't swing. It just has Death Touch. Really? Okay. Alright, I'll take two. Just kill your commander here. Um, we'll put a giant token in play, I guess. 
Oh no, it gets exiled because of rest in peace. Right, we can't do that. Right, 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 right. Alright, so that wasn't as good as I thought, but oh well. Taking two is maybe kind of sketch, because we don't want to be exactly dead to their commander, and we currently are. So, kind of suspect. And a reason to hold on to the land is we do have Cultivator Colossus. Let's draw a card. Alright, let's see if this resolves. Kind of hoping this is not Epiphany, and it's just a counterspell. Alright, well, now we're just dead if that is Epiphany, because I gave, them, I gave them, like, so much mana in these tokens that we just can't, like, survive. I think making more cats is better. Alright, let's do this. Uh, that doesn't kill their commander, it's just another land's not great. And, uh, swing for four. Okay, if it's Epiphany, we're dead, I believe. <laughs> nope, they just top-decked a different one. <sighs> All right. Well, if I... Uh... If I had put two counters on that... Well, no, it would just got countered, though. What was the card? What was the uh, foretold card? It was Epiphany. It was Epiphany, so it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. They had both extra turns. So, yep, I mean, of course. Yeah, why wouldn't they, right? Of course. They exiled a bunch of cards, but they didn't exile any of the extra turn effects and, and literally drew them. So, silly me. What would I what would I expect? What more would I expect? All right, I'm gonna call it there. It's been a while, and this is really just wasn't great. Um, the games were long though, and kind of back and forth, which is that's you know that's decent. It's not just like this one side. Well, we did play against Mono Red a couple times, but uh, it's t it wasn't typically like this uh, straightforward. Um, one person's making decisions while the other's just casting the green card. The glowing card in their de uh, hand. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, if we cast Haro there and this was a 6-6, six, six, we don't die to the attack. But then they, could, they yet again have another extra turn at some point later. And that probably does us anyways. Does us in. So, Is there anything else we could have done maybe? I don't think so. Not really. Maybe forced out the angels. But they would have just countered that instead of the Cultivator Colossus. And still had enough mana to do... Stupid stuff. It's just kind of unbelievable that they didn't exile any extra turn effect and also drew them off of just the top. They never exiled any of them from the uh, uh, mute, mutate ability. And they just they just drew them. So guess I'm not beating that. But usually... Uh, that was close, though. That was close. My stomach's growling. Um, yeah, no, there really wasn't much I could do other than just fade taking exactly six by making my thing have enough toughness. Or just if rest in peace, rest in peace was actually kind of useless because they exiled their graveyard synergy, Mizzix Mastery. I wouldn't have been able to know that, but if I did, I didn't have to get this and maybe could have gotten something else. But that's banking on what they randomly exile and what they randomly don't. And they randomly exiled the, the like, ideal cards, especially that we chose this, and then didn't exile the ideal cards. So, uh, What other outs did we have? I know I'm hung up on that game before I even want to talk about the deck, but we had Wandering Emperor maybe, could have exiled it when they went to Swing. Any sort of flying blocker could have prevented instant lethal. Intervention could have gained some life, even. Uh, Splendor, at any point, would have been nice. Uh, if I got that instead of Rest in Peace, I couldn't have like cast it and probably would have never found a chance to cast it. So, don't think that really would have worked. Yep, I don't know. We, they just casted Luna 80 times and got their perfect cards. Um, everything felt alright for what it was trying to do. 
though, like as a deck, it felt fine. Maybe it could go a little bit less on lands, as we always get the lands with um, Yashard. Uh, maybe less mana rocks, because we are a ramp deck. We could drop some of the, well, not the mana rocks, maybe like treasure map. Anything that doesn't really work with Yashard in play might be worthwhile to drop. Like treasure map, I can't use the tokens. Um, but I still think it's fine. You don't tend to have both really ever at the same time, and there's not a lot of cards in my deck that kind of do that issue or have that issue. So I think that's fine. Felidar Retreat and Zendikar's Royal seem all right. The Planeswalkers are all right. Ulamog is just good when you're a ramp-based deck of any kind, and I suppose we are. Crater Hoof is kind of suspect, especially when you only have like two creatures, or just one and it's the second creature, it might not kill your opponent, but uh, maybe still worth it. I like Harmonize, kind of wish there was like a white Harmonize, but well, not yet. Um, taxing from white cards? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not trying to slow the game down or stax my opponent, I'm just trying to like ramp into weird mid-rangey stuff to just kill them. I don't think buying time with taxing effects is a reasonable avenue to victory when I'm just trying to bank on Ulamog or something. But I uh, certainly could try it. I wouldn't... I don't know if I'd try Yasharn as the commander in that instance, though. Even though he is sort of a stacks thing with his ability. You can kind of, like, you know, stack your stacks. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I think that'll be it. So let me know what you thought about the deck. Um, let me know what you would and would not run. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, it was nice to have you here. Thanks for watching if you're live. And uh, like, comment, and do be subscribing. And I will see you guys next time with something that maybe, maybe makes me feel less depressed <laughs> by the end of the three-hour session. Because um, the losing with this feels like really bad because it's slow <laughs> you don't just like lose in one foul swoop although when you do i guess it feels kind of depressing too but when it takes like five minutes for your opponent to slowly like snap your neck it's it's it just doesn't feel great um, and that this deck kind of puts itself in that scenario because it doesn't like turn around with aggression and it doesn't stabilize with controlling elements somewhere in the middle so it really feels uh feel you're really feeling it but either way Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.